Welcome everyone. On today's mini module, we're going to talk about getting campus buy-in when you're proposing a new project, such as a financial wellness program. Today we're going to identify some strategies that will help you get buy-in across campus. We've all heard the phrase, it takes a village, and when it comes to building your financial wellness program, it's no exception. College students need more than Credit 101. They need schools with holistic financial literacy programs. Reactionary help, such as default management or loan exit counseling, isn't as good as teaching students money management all along. So we're going to discuss how to build a base of support, ways to prepare for any objections, and showing others the what's in it for them, and inviting them to co-create the solution. So let's dive right in. There are numerous benefits to getting buy-in, including an increase in resources. When you have others interested in your project, they're also more willing to help by sharing their ideas and time. Everyone is on the same page, so you're sending the same message, and that is that this is important. You're not doing this because you have nothing to do with your time. You're doing this because there's a huge value to both your students and your school. With faculty on board, you can get into classrooms. There's a school in the Midwest that has an agreement with faculty. Whenever they have to cancel a class, rather than do that, they reach out to the financial aid office. The financial aid office, in turn, will arrive to that class prepared to deliver a session on any number of financial literacy topics. They actually have a suite of topics to deliver at a moment's notice. And of course, it goes without saying that more hands on deck means a lighter workload for you. So now that we know the benefits, how do we make it happen? Well, you start by building a base of supporters. For a good idea to be adopted by a group, it's not enough for most people to be on board. You need a few very vocal supporters to champion your idea. You may have some positional authority, but it's important to enlist the support of other teammates before you even present your ideas. Taking the time to have one-on-one -on -one conversations, to sell your idea to people you trust within the group is time consuming, but vital to ensuring your pitch to the full group is successful. Prepare to address objections. Now this may seem obvious, but people generally don't prep enough for objections. If you just dismiss people's viewpoints, they don't feel respected and will more likely fight your proposal. So be sure to take the time to appropriately address each one. For example, someone might have uh, an objection about the amount of time it'll take to develop and implement. Be prepared to talk about how much time you think you'll need. Neutralize naysayers. Even after addressing objections in a way that will please most people, there are often still naysayers who just refuse to change, don't want to do anything, or perhaps dislike you personally. Making sure that those individuals don't shut down your ideas in front of the group should be a key strategy for getting team buy-in. Depending on your situation, there are a couple of tactics that you can take to neutralize naysayers. Try to win them over in a one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes naysayers just want attention. Other times they have genuine concerns or misunderstandings. When you meet in person, you can create a safe environment to speak honestly, identify the underlying issue, and figure out what to do without the pressure of egos or an audience. Have someone they trust or respect win them over. You might have the right message for the naysayer, but perhaps they need a different messenger. If you can convince someone they trust to make the case for an idea, they might be able to get through when you couldn't. Use peer pressure. If you have enough support, they might feel the pressure to jump on the bandwagon. No one wants to be the one holding everyone back from pursuing this great idea. This isn't always easy to do, and it could backfire. They could just dig their heels in. Show them you have their best interests in mind. People need to know that you care about them and aren't proposing an idea that really only benefits you. The best way to do this is to have a track record of generous contributions to the group and remind them of that track record if necessary, and be prepared to show how financial wellness for students is good for everyone. And co-create the solution with feedback. Oftentimes, the best ideas come from a group effort. Going beyond building a base of supporters is an advanced tactic. Enlist people within your group in the idea creating process. Get their feedback on how you can best solve the problems of the group. And not only will you often get better ideas, but you'll have even stronger champions when someone has an emotional investment in making the idea work. Inform them with facts. 
information can be the key to getting management and others to understand just what it means for your students in your school to have a financial wellness program. Be sure to keep it simple. When you spend too much time on the details in the early stages of garnering buy-in, you can make others think it's going to be too complicated to accomplish. Pay attention to your message and the amount of information to deliver. In general, you often lose people because your idea is too complex. I'm not suggesting you treat them like children, but invest some time in making sure that your suggestion to the group is as crisp and understandable as possible. Write it down, edit, refine, and practice before you deliver. And don't give up on good ideas. If your proposal doesn't get buy-in the first time, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad idea. Could be a bad idea, but that's a different issue altogether. Assuming your idea is decent, it's worthwhile to evaluate what went wrong in the buy-in process. So you can either try again or apply what you learned to future instances. Why didn't the idea get traction? What obje objections can you better address? How can you improve the timing of your proposal? Make a plan and try again. If your idea is truly a good one, then it's worth fighting for. You just have to invest the time and effort to make it happen. Highlight the need and the whole concept of the what's in it for me. Let's face it, people are often motivated by personal gain. Your boss is going to be a lot more interested in your idea if it can make him look good to his boss and perhaps get a raise or a promotion. Show people how adopting your idea will provide some benefit to them and make their lives better, easier, and so on. Now when we said earlier to inform your group with facts, here are some that might be helpful to you. Some of these are quite alarming. What age group do you think makes up the fastest growing group of bankruptcy filers? Some of you may be surprised that people 25 or younger make up the fastest group of bankruptcy filers, according to the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs. So we know that students who drop out or don't finish their degree have a higher chance of defaulting on their student loans. According to a 2013 study from Harvard University, only 56% of the students who entered America's colleges and universities graduate within six years, while only 29% of students who enter two-year programs complete their degrees within three years, the study found. So the percentage of college students who drop out before obtaining their degree, 44%. According to a study done by EverFi, what percentage of college freshmen worry about debt? The answer is 79%. And while 79% worry frequently about debt, a majority of students agreed with the ideas that it's okay to have an overdraft fee if you know you can afford to pay for it, and that it's nice to own things that impress people. Nearly a third agreed it was better to have something now and pay for it later. Students usually enter college with risky debt behavior, the study says. And what percentage of students say they need to own things to impress others? Well, the answer is 60%. And I think this might even be indicative of people in general, not just students. Make it easy for them to say yes by highlighting the work of other schools and relaying accolades and positive outcomes. As comedians say, timing is everything. Make sure to consider when the best time would be for suggesting your proposal. You want to capture their attention and catch them at a time when they'd be most amenable to this idea. Meredith College celebrates Financial Literacy Week, asking students, are you financially strong? Accounting and business professors join with student services professionals to host informational sessions throughout the week, and topics included budgeting, saving, investments, interest calculators, credit cards, salary negotiations, and student loan repayment. These topics all hold value and can help their students. Kelly Hart from Ohio State once said that students need to graduate with two good records a good academic record, and a good financial record. Let's face it, students need both to be successful. The University of Iowa offers one-to-one -one personal financial counseling. They have a three-person financial literacy group that has met with nearly 1,000 students individually in less than six months to save students an average of 14%. That's huge. Their goals were to reduce the average debt for the class of 2015, so it will be less than the national average. They were determined to decrease unsubsidized direct loan borrowing and to increase the number of returning students who file for financial aid early enough to be considered for first come, first serve scholarships and grants. So set your goals so they're real, relevant and realistic. And Mendocino Community College 
held Manage Your Money Week, which focused on responsible borrowing and basic financial literacy skills. It really doesn't have to be complicated to be effective. It was part of their I Can Afford College initiative, and they partnered with local credit unions to share resources and expertise, so you don't have to go it alone. They also had school administration work with student groups to address topics for the workshops, so they had student input too. And the football coach attended and set up sessions directly for all student athletes. So getting that level of support can be a huge factor in making the program successful for you and your students. Tie it to a larger goal. This is the opposite of the what's in it for me. This is the vision strategy. While personal gain is nice, people are also motivated to do things for larger, more noble reasons. If you can make them feel like this idea is part of a larger goal or movement, like participating in this financial wellness program is going to help your students be able to borrow less and be more successful financially, which in turn could equate to alums being in a better position to give back, you may have more staff and faculty embrace your ideas. Remember, proposing new ideas is scary, and most people are afraid of change. It's almost always hard work to get a good idea adopted, even by the smartest and most well-intentioned of groups. So don't get frustrated. Just get it smart and get it done. Educating your students on financial issues will have several benefits for your school, such as lower default rates, because many students who are delinquent on their federal loans are also delinquent on other loans and credit accounts. Unfortunately, they end up defaulting on their loans because they do have too many credit obligations. All of this means their inability to repay their federal loans impacts your cohort default rate. Higher retention rates, helping them reduce financial problems, will increase their chances of graduating. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, 14% of students who left college without completing a degree cited financial reasons higher institutional receivables. If they gain even the basic financial literacy skills, they'll know about budgeting and credit, and thus will be in a better position to pay the debts they owe the school. And higher alumni contributions. If they can manage their finances after they leave school, they'll be more likely to donate to your capital campaigns. Ultimately, it improves student success. Student success encompasses many areas. However, the two that most impact defaults are retention and financial literacy. We know that retention is crucial to default prevention because 70% of all defaulters are those who do not graduate. However, financial literacy will also increase student success. Educating students on how to make good financial decisions will help them successfully manage their debt while they're in college and after they graduate. As I just mentioned, many students, those who graduate and even those who don't, are having an increasingly difficult time affording their loan payments. Part of the reason is they not only have high educational loan debt with federal and private loans, but they also have high consumer loan debt. We see financial literacy as part of default prevention. If we can educate students to be conservative consumers, hopefully they'll be able to afford their loan debt once they enter repayment. Financial literacy programs also provide benefits for your students. Lower debt burden. Teaching them to become conservative borrowers can decrease their student and consumer loan debt. Those skills will be transferable to their daily budgets and help them be financially successful overall. Eligibility for private and grad plus loans. There's a growing concern over an issue that some medical and law schools face because their students have made credit mistakes as an undergraduate and aren't able to qualify for the grad plus or private loans to continue their education. Better credit scores mean better rates on loans and credit cards because credit scores dictate how much lenders will charge to borrow money. The financial situation they should strive for is the driver's seat. Having a good credit score puts them in the driver's seat not only for better loan offers, but they can negotiate for lower interest rates on their credit cards too. Better rates also mean approval to rent off-campus housing and more employment opportunities. It would be a shame to spend four to five years of hard work and not be able to get the job they really want because of bad credit. Some employers, about 47%, will review credit before extending a job offer. They use credit to determine a person's character. And finally, invite others to co-create the solution. Invite staff and faculty to assist in the development of the curriculum. They may have ideas and tools that you haven't thought of, 
one person can't know everything, and enlisting the collective genius of your faculty and staff can yield great results. Ask them to share their experience and expertise. Maybe they'll be willing to even present on a topic. Maybe they'll invite you to do so, or allow you to bring in a guest speaker to the classroom. Increase awareness and promote initiatives, and be an active part of the solution to improve student outcomes. You'll also want to make sure you have identified available resources. And when it comes to financial wellness, there are several, including those offered by our affiliate, Northstar. There are some handy tools to enable you to be successful in your endeavors, and we've provided some examples for you here. There are also some handy websites to use, and you can place these links on your website or even in your social media channels. So thank you so much for joining us today. We realize you do have a choice in how you spend your time, so we appreciate that you chose to spend it with us. We hope you found this mini-module helpful.